So how was the soundtrack of the first Mario RPG ever? Well, it starts safe and differential with Mario 3's first world map theme. But then it throws this at you, all original music. Uh, Mario RPG was my childhood. I played it on release, I replayed it way too much. It was my first RPG and my first game with a script to uh, forcing me to improve my uh, burgeoning English fast. I still remember Booster saying rehearsal. Whenever I booted the game, I listened to this track in full. It was a ritual and frankly, I must say I had very good taste. This is the best track of the game. And this is the best part. How great is that? So we're revisiting this 27-year-old soundtrack by Yoko Shimomura, which she calls a turning point in her life. And she's also revisiting it through this year's remake as she's sole composer on that too. Let's hear what she did with my favorite track. Guitar! Delightful indeed. Oh, it's cheerful now. Uh, despite all these flourishes and, and how I prefer listening to the new version, uh, I think I have to give the edge to the original because uh, its soundscape is such a precise preview of what's coming through the rest of the soundtrack. It's, it makes it a perfect intro song. Then you start the game and the file select screen plays a simple and cute variation on the main Mario theme. The new version, after playing once, goes to new places. A fun bonus should you stay on that screen. Uh, by the way, this video has full spoilers for both games. So, in this game, Mario and Bowser are neighbors. So, a uh, princess kidnapped. Mario goes next door, lets himself in uh, to this 12 second music loop. Yeah, not all tracks are winners here. Uh, at least the remake adds more layers every loop. So, just for that, 
Next track though is a winner. Bowser tends to have a new theme in each game, even in the movie, but this is a rare exception. The first time he had boss music ever was in Mario 3. And it gets a glow up here. Yeah, I love the remake sounds here. Then you get worrying twinkles. Oh, orchestra and vocals. Nice. Dramatic piano. And menacing twinkles. Back to Mario's house. Again, the grassland music with most of the Mario theme now, too. Yeah, this is a case where the real instruments sound out of place. Oh, and in a rare example of musical continuity... This track was reused in the first Mario & Luigi game by the same composer. On to the world map, whose music was great in its simplicity. But the remake sponsor instruments give a better feel of adventure. And what more if you spend enough time pondering where to? The track that's used for most wilderness areas is named The Road is Full of Dangers. And doesn't sound threatening at all. Like for the world map, I find a better feel of adventure in the remake. Hot take. I think this is the weakest regular battle theme out of every Mario RPG. Not by that much. It's just that it's quite repetitive and doesn't really have a hook. Now you could say Mario and Luigi's is similarly very repetitive, but it's so catchy! Color splash after a very strong start. Disappoints with an unexpectedly weak melody. 
but its stronger parts are great. Paper Jam 2 has a weak melody. But it goes places. This sounds suspiciously like the epilogue music. Most other battle themes though I could just listen to on loop. Shimomura composed half of them, so good on her. Anyway, what does the remake make of this mid-battle theme? It wins. Congrats. Variety too, right? Hmm. The Mushroom Kingdom theme as previewed in the track Happy Adventure. this one loops because after the bombastic part, it feels like the calm part is just a contrasting follow-up. But no, that's just how the track began. I hear this track is well known outside the game due to it appearing in a, a, a YPTMV 15 years ago. My ship sails in the morning. You don't hear from me in a month. Send dinner. Hey, want to fight the forces of evil in Koridai? Hell no, boy. I'm going to Gamelon. It's easy. Let's go find Zelda. You've saved Zelda. I'm going to Gamelon after you've scrubbed all the floors. Huh? Scrub, scrub, scrubbed all the floors in Hyrule. Scrub, scrub, scrubbed all the floors in Gamelon. Scrub, scrub, scrubbed my ship in the morning. Uh, okay. Oh, it's just been remade. Let's go for Zelda! You say Zelda, I'm going to Gamelon after you scrubbed all the floors. Huh? Scrub, scrub, scrubbed all the floors in Hyrule. Scrub, scrub, scrubbed all the floors Yeah, definite Gamelon. improvement. Scrub, scrub, scrubbed my ship. Uh, what, what am I doing? As the original track was written as an orchestral piece, having real instruments is sure to be an advantage.
but I wouldn't say it's better than the original because uh, the bombastic part was extremely precise there. You could hear every layer very distinctly. Now, this one I prefer to the other uh, danger one because it feels more wild, unhinged even. And I really like how those two tracks together are an indirect musical reference to the main Mario series where the first level has more understated bubbly music, usually called the ground theme. And the second level has the more energetic athletic theme. Ground? Athletic. Ground? Athletic. Ground? Athletic. See? Okay, that was a loop. Well, so I really like that little uh, variation they did there with the trumpets. Oh, and it's here you get your first invincibility star, which incorporates the whistles from the beginning of Happy Adventure. Ah, this one is called Irrepressible Star for some reason. Now, I find the battle theme weak, but the bus themes are anything but. Percussion is top notch and the whole thing feels both sinister and epic. That's pretty short, unfortunately. Cute extension. Yeah, live percussion works really well here. Uh, yeah, I can understand why they showcase this in the trailer. It's a well-balanced orchestral mix, and it really plays to the strengths of the original piece. And there's something more going on here. The remake tracks how many action commands you execute correctly in a row, calling that a chain. And from five up, the battle music gains extra percussion. In this case, for example, I might have exaggerated the effect a bit. In comparison, the regular battle theme gets uh, punchier drums. You mostly notice the change when you fail an action command, actually, and the music seems to deflate. I won't showcase the rest of the extra percussion. It's, uh, it's a great touch, but mostly mundane, musically. Oh, look at him dance! 
This is everything! Next track is our introduction to Smithy's minions and their line. Next track is our introduction to Smithy's minions and their light motif. It just sounds so desolate and oppressive, which is appropriate, but doesn't do much for me. Whereas the remake just goes over the top throwing the misery in your face. And I appreciate the effort. And that key change. And that extension. Now, most RPGs that have different music for major bosses reserve them something more sinister or epic. But in this game, I already described the regular boss theme as sinister and epic. Those bosses were bullies at best, defeated alone in the wilderness, but... This Togo Knife guy leads countless minions and has taken over the whole first town. It's his turf, he's having fun, the music is bombastic. It confirms the weapon's light motif. It's perfect! nice, especially during the more atmospheric parts, but the live leads, they don't have the presence of their artificial counterparts. Compare. Then you get a star piece. And hear the star motif in a more positive light for the first time. about this one. Still don't. But the next I'm looking forward to. Wine River, it's called. Weird thing that in the Mario game. I don't mind, but still, still weird. Uh, it's pretty short. It's about to loop already. I never noticed that background instrument, though. Listen to that. instrument was um, banjo then. Yeah, 
I found it jarring at first, but it's really growing on me. <laughs> yeah, finally, it's like this is how it was always supposed to sound. Wow, a two second loop. I like it, I always like how the music waits for the tadpole bridge and then the whole place comes alive. Quite interesting, and I do prefer listening to the new version, but in-game I think the original version was more appropriate as it, uh, as it would fade into the background after a while. Uh, this version is uh, constantly renewing festivals, so it, it always brings attention to itself. The sad song that became a bit of a meme uh, that I won't show any of. Not much to say here, it's perfunctory sad piano, which makes it kind of a joke in this overly joyful game. Yeah, it first plays when Malo learns he's not, in fact, a frog. Oh. <laughs> This is perfect, it just runs with the joke. And I like uh, the new title, Elegy. Same name as uh, a move from an enemy that uh, plays the same melody. Rain check on Newtown music as uh, this one is already under siege. And I just realized why these toes markings look like that. Their heads look like targets. So this kid stays inside playing with his dolls. To a fairly recognizable track. No, actually those look like action figures. Ugh, nah, that music box instrument has way too much reverb. I really don't like it. After Mario gets knocked out cold for the night. That's the star motif, best version yet.
And that's the intro of the previous track, now used as Gino's motif. That's pretty much it for motifs for this game. There's frog whistles, star, weapons, elegy, Geno. Who has left for the place with the music everyone remembers? track not my favorite and I'm getting this recommended Audio mixing could be better, but uh, this is quite enjoyable. And there's a remake. Give me my frying pan and parasol. There are many secrets in this game, many of which just a piece insane. Why we try to cheat in a really good game? Just sounds like crap and it makes you look lame. Exiting the forest is super simple. Much improved in all aspects. Oh uh, yeah, back to the game. Nah, that's too staccato. It's like the lead is shy. Okay. Nah, I can hear the the annoying music box look. In the background like this, it's fine. Exiting the forest is super simple. It's not looping! Loops. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, this is perfect. On my first playthrough, I did not go back to Rose Town. It's optional. But you miss out on Geno's first weapon and Mario having to be physically restrained from attacking a child. Still the case in the remake. And you also miss out on this incredibly upbeat track, of which I expect a slam dunk from the new version. Nice touch.
another option all the tour is uh, down on the world map and from the surface too with a very nice take on another classic Yeah, drums are better, synths are worse, and I'm not choosing. Yeah, weirdly enough, the Yoshis are optional in this game. Oh, you know this track will be completely over the top in the remake. background synth. And now you'd think that was the loop, but uh, the even loops have this variation. Then you race. really bad if you take this long. I mostly remember this one for its jarring chord change. stronger contrast from the comp part. Yeah. Yeah, so new one is more enjoyable, but it's a full-on fanfare for a village full of miners? While they're struggling to save children from a cave-in, it doesn't fit at all. At the end of the mines, uh, this punchable dude picks a fight with you because... Um, otherwise you'd get a star without a fight, I guess. And that would be really weird. 
and you and the mine inexplicably survive a massive explosion. But then... Going from Midas River, I think I can just vote for the new version already and trust. All the layers! Nah, it was a safe bet. So yeah, even though the new soundtrack makes some missteps, uh, I don't think the old one stands a chance. But I'll keep uh, keeping track. Booster Tower is so fun, you break down the door to a peaceful lobby. Where you can talk to the receptionist before fighting them. Was that always Magitek armor there? Then after Booster greets you... I see a problem for the remake here. The lead brass is a caricature. I mean, there, there's no real instrument that comes close to this, uh, this filth, uh, this grain. As expected, it's not the same. Channel's great though. The loop is a variation. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it lost some personality with the lead brass, but this is good. Ah. That's filthy. the actual loop, surely. Wait. Oof. The actual loop is glitchy. That's weird for how polished this game is otherwise. Nah, I, I can't vote for... Uh, I'm not deciding. In the middle of the tower are curtains that turn Mario old school. close to call, but that's another appearance of the main Mario theme. Immediately followed by a third reference to Mario 3. Oh, 
wow, this one's straight up better. Slope is a funny one. Every time it would loop, it changes key up a full tone and dials up the intensity, even when you think it could not possibly anymore. But four key changes is all the two minutes of the minigame can allow, so it gracefully fades out. But although you could never hear it in game, the track is programmed for two more key changes. And if you count to them, it finishes a full octave above its starting point. And then just cuts abruptly. Yeah, I'm intrigued by this one, because with real instruments, you can't just go up indefinitely. Instruments have a maximum range. And that trumpet is already pushing its range. Two key changes, two more to go. The trumpet gave up! <laughs> uh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, the strings take the relay from there. Oh, nice harmony. Yeah, this just works better with real instruments. Very nice. Yeah, we know how this goes. A remake! Here in both versions, Shimomura is pulling a fast one on us by going through a succession of key changes as when the song comes back to the melody, it's actually one tone lower without us noticing. Those added strings are nice. Ah, annoying music box again. And here the song unexpectedly moves up a tone. And you think it's another variation, but no, that was the last tone from earlier. And that was the loop. But it gives the song a sense of a constant renewal. Never cared for this one. Well, it does have the merit of reinforcing the star motif with emphasis on the organ, so that's at least that. 
Yeah, and after the weird fight for the third star, this one doesn't make you fight for it at all. As for the remake... This is just a grating wall of sound. Does it get better though? No, nope. pass. Next town is funny because if the villagers' behavior doesn't tip you off, the music sure does. Then you go to the sea, which even looks like an actual beach in the remake, and you expect yet another festive tropical track, but no, you're dropped right into a creepy cavern. And when you do reach what passes for the beach of this, and I quote, resort town, there's just no music. Another one I never really cared for, and I earned more than my share of it because the password stumped me for a whole week. Remake. Already sounds much better. Here with those strings? Alright, this is the part where the song threatens to get interesting. Let's hope the remake goes for it. wasted opportunity. Then you do fight for this star and uh, well I don't want to nitpick but the smithy gang knew you already had three stars and they know you have the fourth now and they only demand the fourth rather than all four. Well what a bargain you oblige and, and then you fight for the fourth star for a second time as if the game is compensating for Star Hill. Oh well it works. Then the town music kicks in, and it's uh, the simplest one so far, so I expect the remake to stay pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> An actual recorder, come on. <laughs> Oh, this is nice though. Oh! Yeah, but the recorder takes me completely out, forget it. Now for something special, Monstro Town. Back in 1996, you'd already raced with Bowser and a Koopa Troopa in Mario Kart, but a whole village of monsters you could talk to was pretty unusual. So its music is weird, dissonant, with a big variety of instruments that don't really match. It keeps introducing motifs as it does monsters, that was the second, this one's the first, uh, there's the bass too that could count. Feel the build up. And that's a third motif or fourth, depending on how you count it. Well, the, the harpsichord in general. And after a minute, they start playing together. The layers! 
Yeah, I need to insist on this. This is the most technically impressive track of the game. The SNES has eight sound channels, so at most, eight sounds can play at the same time. In this case, one channel is reserved to the bass, one to percussion. Listen to that detail! Three channels for the organ. How dance! Two for the marimba. And one for the harpsichord. Together now. Unsurprisingly, this is the longest looping track of the game. Lots of echo, weird. No, echo works here though. So far so good. Uh, two instruments share the lead now. Yeah, that works. Percussion is tight. Too much of a wall of sound, it's really hard to, to hear every individual part. Ah, uh, doesn't work for me. So, you're here for a star, and there it is! On the one hand, not what you were looking for. On the other, that finishes this game's musical side quest. Something you never see in games, and this one is unforgiving. There's this composer, Todovsky, who you need to bring uh, music to. And the first piece is given textually. Um, you have to note it and then enter it on a tadpole staff in treble clef, if you don't know what that is. And I didn't. Well, you learn on the fly. The second piece is textual too, in a more roundabout way, and the third you have to do by ear, the star. And then you get to compose a fourth piece and hear how everything flows together. Yeah, well, that's not how I would have ended it, but, but that's fine. To each their own. If you know of other games that spring on you a quest that requires musical knowledge like this, share it in the comments. Next up, Nimbus Land, whose track feels airy thanks to how its few motifs play in constantly changing keys with little structures to hold things together, allowing you to just get lost in the song. Very cute. I like it, uh, 
it's more structured, sure, due to the instrument variety, but those instruments give it so much texture and depth. Nothing is really lost. Ah, uh, this one. The harpsichord tune is probably fine, but I can't stand the unending laugh. Well, presuming it is a laugh. Let's hear the remake. This is even more grating! And it was a laugh. Then is the rhythm game where you dodge Dodo's pecs. Alright, new version? One is a favorite of mine. You really get the feeling this is the dangerous penultimate dungeon. Listen to that! And that's the loop. It's just relentless like that. Yeah, that bass doesn't nearly have the same punch. Guitar already? Well, I like it, but... Is there anything left for later on, I'm wondering? convinced. Okay, no. However, if you want to hear excellent covers of Barrel Volcano, still until the end of the video, I'll have a bunch of recommendations across the soundtrack. After a two-faced boss, you reach the star. Deservedly so. Uh, since the last one, you've been through Lanzan, Belon Temple, Monstro Town, Bean Valley, Nimbus Castle, and now Barrel Volcano, so... But the music trolls you. <laughs> this is the sixth time you hear the star get music, so you zone out and... Uh... Nope! You'll have to fight a second boss for it. The game is really overcompensating for Star Hill, I think. But first, another favorite of mine. <laughs> Actual piano, why not? It works.
Then you're finally back at Bowser's Keep. And luckily the track has new material, remixed from Bowser's Battle Team. Nice! Double bass too! At the end of the keep, the music does a faux pas. The boss's defeat is treated as dramatically as can be, after which you dance to the top! Not cool! Then the real final dungeon has by far the weirdest time signature I'd ever heard. You can count 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. But that's an edit I made, so we have a baseline. Or should that be... Well, no matter how you put it, the unedited track has a rare 13-8 time signature, for which my favorite interpretation goes... When the drums go freestyle, it's hard to follow, but they do keep count. How great is that? the little piano touches, they're so typical of modern Final Dungeon music. Torn. This sounds great, but I really like the drums just going at it freestyle alone. Yeah, this is nice too, but it loses some of the alienness of the place. Nah, I can decide. There's just no music. I love how the final boss music starts, just the weapons like motif, as an organ solo. Top notch percussion, of course. That organ bends down hard. Which the remake can't replicate with a real one, I think. This part sounds a bit muddled, which is unfortunate because the synth is having the time of its life.
and the track ends with an organ solo to bring it home. That organ sounded intense! Oh, the organ does bend down through editing, I don't know. You can hear the synth, it's much more distinct. <laughs> Little plucked strings. Yeah, the end was generally muddy, but a, a wall of sound is really appropriate here. And in this battle track, exceptionally, having a chain not only adds the expected percussion, but also marimba! Which doubles the synth part I like. Second phase now. Well, the bass sound's gonna be hard to top. That bendy sound too. Yeah, artificial instruments just work here. The bass is so punchy! And finally, the bass plays the weapon's light motif to bring it home. Okay, electric guitar is one way to go. Oh, you can hear Shimomura's more recent style here in the strings. Wow, this is as punchy as it gets for a real bass. <laughs> did you hear what it did? Bring it home. Ah. Okay, yeah, I love what she did with it. I really enjoyed that. Uh, the mixing was superb. But of course, the more alien sound of the original was completely ditched, so... Uh, well, this is more of a side grade, I'd say. Well, you beat the final boss. It massively explodes. You again inexplicably survive. Well, both times there was a star. Maybe that's an explanation. Uh, speaking of stars, their motif comes back in force because it's time for Gino to leave. The music is almost the same as when he first arrived and 
With his team playing, he pings every character like he had pinged every doll. Action figure. The original climax of this track went like this. But the new version extends it. Then there's the epilogue, uh, epilogue. The epilogue, and what a glow up. Original sounded fine. But how about real violin? And since it seems everyone had their wishes granted, it ends with the star motif in the background. Then it's the parade, which became a Mario RPG staple. As is often the case with credits, the track revisits music from the game. And this is footage from the remake as it left both the visuals and the audio unchanged. Until nightfall, that is, when... And it ends with a bombastic rendition of the Mushroom Kingdom theme.
brings me right back. Oh, I can't stand this instrument though. Much better. I remember staying on this screen for minutes the first time. I even left it to left the console open overnight. Of course, I skipped something though, so let's go back for Culex. In the original game, uh, th this music was mostly a direct transposition of Final Fantasy IV to the Mario RPG sound font. Just note for note. But this time, Shimomura gets to do her thing, starting with the Final Fantasy Prelude, also known as the Crystal theme. And you can already hear extra strings in the background. And then it expands! We're due for a loop! That's not a loop. Okay, there we are! Yeah, big point for the remake there! Now the main event! Now for the main event! Pretty conservative for now. Let's skip over to the next part. Oh yeah, this sounds nice. Okay, loop done. Yeah, this is a long fight, so a contrasting part like this really helps. But I just like how this is a more distinct version. So it seems that, to me at least, the music of the remake really dominates that of the original. The full real orchestra really improves a lot of the tracks and the variations and additions are welcome. A minority of tracks, though, these ones suffer from the enhancement, whether because they lose some of their identity, become too much of a wall of sound, or were just better with artificial instruments. As for references to other Mario music, we're just missing these two.
Which still leaves the final count much lower than I thought it would be. Yeah, this soundtrack really stands on its own. Well, that's the main video done, but uh, as the timeline suggests, don't go yet, because over the literal decades I've held this music dear to my heart, I have accumulated so many covers and I now share my favorites with you. Tell me what your favorites are too, or engage with this video or channel in the usual ways, and you know the drill, uh, I'll leave you with all that.